Because yeah. the way we do this, yeah. it's guaranteed if you're on a flat table. So the, the idea of a flat table is important. Like if you have a flat table, you can weld something on it and it'll be flat. Or if you want to straighten this out, hands off. I don't need to do that. The table's already straight. So how do we do it? Um, thank you, Aiden. <laughs> And we're not going to put too much emphasis on it, but watch what happens. Do it with my eyes closed, but no, because I want to see where I am. But this is plastic. Plastic melts. This is hot. We can make this with our nichrome heater elements and a 3D printed casing and an open source electric motor. Good product. Painter. Done. Oh, Give me that one. That one's not flat. That one needs to go. That one needs to do the same. So William, I think, who did this? Uh, you need to do that. It's it's a flat table. So this one will fall down. I think it already fell down, right? So yeah. There's a little bit of each panel. Yeah. So I'm I'm holding it down. But that's like okay, done. So we can move on to, somebody might, might just, just hold that just flat, so, because it's still wet and soft, I mean, it's, so what I noticed yesterday, and give me that one. I didn't notice the sun. What I noticed yesterday was, in the sun, I left it in a car and this thing just all got bent up. It, the solar thermal gain on this, because this is a black body, sigma t to the fourth, for the physics people, Radiation, black body radiation. If you, the same white ones were out there, nothing happened to them. And this thing got worked up, and I, I straightened it out already, but this captures heat because it's black. And it's enough, it's enough, the solar energy is enough to actually completely distort it and warp it. So don't leave it out like I did yesterday in the sun. I didn't know was, the sun was hot enough to do that. Because the melting point of that is, uh, what is it? Glass transition one, um, so I found that PLA starts melting at around like 150 Celsius. Celsius. That's hot. It's melting different than before. Now the sun is well, not... Like, I have a started being able to exclude it. Oh, by the way, the calculations, the sun only gets it up to 90 degrees. Yeah. So how did that warp up if, it's, if it melts at 150? Well, you can still get slight little creep. But if you look at the... Actual, this is important. And sigma t to the fourth, which is a law of physics, it talks about what... Uh, when you have energy from the sun, this is relevant for like solar, thermal, anything, energy on the sun will get metal hot up to 90 degrees Celsius. You can calculate it because what you have is solar gain, but what do you have coming out of this? It radiates, it actually radiates. It's actual electromagnetic radiation, thermal radiation. But the rate of radiation is such that radiation increases as temperature goes up, like a hot piece of metal, it's when it starts glowing red, that thing is throwing off a lot of heat. Uh, same as with this, when you get higher temperature, you throw off more heat. It happens with the thousand watts per square meter from the sun, which is the amount of energy, you will get it hot to 90 degrees Celsius. You can actually calculate that it's on a wiki, but it's in the thermal design section of the course. But that's a cool thing to know, which says that, um, like if you have solar thermal, for electricity applications, like for solar concentrator, you're getting orange 90 Celsius, so that means like one or two concentration gets you above the boiling point of water. You can store boiling water in what's known as saturated water. It's water that's above 100, that's in a pressure vessel that you do not allow to evaporate. With a very basic solar concentrator system, you can get that, I'm kind of getting up here on that, but. It's important for the sake of, like, if you're talking about renewable energy, to understand that the sun almost gets you enough to that big question of energy storage. Because saturated water is a way to store energy. I'll talk a little bit about this, like, basic, yeah, I'd like to hear more about that. That's basic numerical literacy. But you can store saturated water and it has an intense amount of energy. So you have a vessel at above 100 Celsius under pressure, but not too much pressure like 200 PSI, uh, and that, like the energy density of that is, is enough that you can replace batteries 
when you run that energy through some extraction system such as a steam engine, heat engine of some sort. Anyway, cool thing to think about because we can get past the battery stuff, which I mentioned about the concept of abundant materials. Water is abundant. You don't need batteries with lithium ion. You can use water and metal pressure vessels. People, let's wake up. Like the renewable energy is possible. That kind of stuff, I, I believe, is quite possible. It's, it just takes somebody doing it. Okay, let's look at the 